streaming. There it goes. Okay. Streaming. There it goes. It is live. Very cool, guys. How is everyone doing? Streamlabs saying the raffle's been canceled. Yeah, I got canceled. Sorry about that. I, I hit the wrong button, folks. Ah. And uh, it was my bad. But we will we will do one here. In a, we will do one here in a little bit. Uh, and I'm pretty excited for that, actually. Uh, let me test my stuff real quick. And there it is. Yes. Yes. My uh, my almighty uh, little slideshow at the bottom here is going to work. Um, and such. But welcome to Heavy Metal Dungeon Masters, our last episode of the year. Yep. We made it. We made it. We survived. Oh, we survived. Um, you know, and uh, I will say this about 2020, man. The, the music played on, dude. Um, people I mean, we had nothing better to do than to release tunes. I oh well, yeah, they're, they're, you know it's really interesting too. Some there's some stuff on my list too that actually got like recorded this year, and then released this year, pretty pretty fast actually. Uh, once again, I don't think people had anything, anything to do, and it makes me really curious about what 2021 um, is going to look like for music in terms of um, folks, you know, um, going for like the uh, uh, I, well, but they do at home. You know, what are they doing in their basement? What are you doing back there, Tucker? What's all that? You know, so um, <laughs> <laughs> there seems to be some sort of some sort of interesting stuff. Uh, our our right. good buddy Scott here uh, is asking, we look for the show. Uh, and yeah, I was talking about my top albums. Yeah, that was the other week uh, with Cam and such, and um, that was a blast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna tell you what other want to say about music. Uh, I will say this. I guess I could talk a little bit about like kind of what my list is about and how I how I do do it. Um, so I, it's a tw all of our 2020, 2020 releases in regards to when the vinyl was put out. I will say that I'm a, I'm a okay. vinyl dude. Um, so like if the album came out like in like October 2019 and then the vinyl didn't come out until January February, I count for 2020 because I won't I wouldn't have listened to it until 2020. Um, yeah. I always wait to listen to vinyl first. Uh, that said, there is one entry on here I haven't listened to on vinyl yet. Um, but uh, that that's a, that's another that that happens, and I and uh, but I'll probably have it here in probably in the week or so. So, um, but yeah, it was a good year for music, man. Um, what about you, Tucker? What, what do you think about music? I mean, you you guys have been working a little bit here. You guys had like your uh, you had your album come out. You had a uh, Goblin Town come out. <laughs> uh, we. We had, like I said, the full length came out, uh, Adventure One, it's out now. Uh, I have some more uh, for sale in the States now. If anybody is looking to pick up a copy of Adventure One, uh, that's over on our bank camp. That's actually, that actually reminds me, um, the one of my things is, uh, Everyone follows the Spotify list, and I, 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 I kind of stand by what uh, I, I, uh, Trevor, who we talk about from Haunt, put this out. He was like, hey, does anyone want to come to my house and walk down the street and pick up chains off the ground and see if we get more money from Spotify? Um, and he's not wrong, dude. No, no, he's absolutely correct. The main reason that I'm even on there is one because I've accidentally found a bunch of bands that I like through Spotify and then turned around and bought physical merch because I know they don't get shit from Spotify. Yeah. And two, the other reason that I have our music on there is so people can uh, can meme us if they want to. Like okay. they can use this in their Instagram stories and shit. Yeah. That's, that's my true. main that's my main thing that I use it for is I'm just doing it for fun. I know I'm it's I shouldn't be buying into it like I shouldn't be complicit in something that mm -hmm. I feel that weird about and I put off putting us on Spotify for a long time yeah like we still only have the full length on there mm -hmm. but that's not a bad way to go just put the full length on there and then they can go off and find the, the cool little extra things yeah uh, through your other sites and stuff like that too I, I'm a big band camp dude band camp band camp band camp guys I'm telling you <laughs> They fucking treat people I, right. I, I remember when Bandcamp started kind of building up steam, and even as recently as like last year or the year before, there were local bands around here that were just kind of treating it like it was a flash in the pan kind of stupid thing, like Reverb Nation. It's like, dude, no, Bandcamp is entirely different. Yeah. Um, and I like, I like how much... I, I haven't... The thing is, I haven't... I've never spoken to a single music artist who had a bad thing to say about Bandcamp. I have, but it was right. most. It was, but it was really. It was like stupid things. Okay. It was. It was them like, oh well, people bought a bunch of merch, and now I'm my revenue share for my downloads 
is having to catch up, and it's like, yeah. This merch, dude. Char- char- charge more for downloads? Right, right. <laughs> I, I will, I do know that, like, there's kind of some trippy stuff with them in, like, doing cover songs. Because, um, yeah. Uh, uh, Erica, I was trying to, I forgot her last name, uh, Unwoman, she has a lot of cover songs, and she was saying, like, even when, like, there's, like, free streams, like, she has to pay for the stream still out of her own pocket. Hmm. Um, so if you have, so like, if, if someone is streaming her music, she has to pay a little bit out of it. But um, but she she sells pretty well because she does some great streams. Um, she she played her wedding. It was a great, she was great. She's a cellist. Um, played with like a man of Palmer and stuff like that too. But she she does great great work. I recommend it. Actually, let me link it to her real quick because uh uh because she's awesome and maybe we'll look her up afterwards. Um, oh, that's not. That would be the chat for the uh, Zoom meeting. That's not the chat for the, the general chat. Um, there she is. Uh, go take a look at her. Uh, she has a great cover of um, Sisters of Mercy, Temple of Love, uh, which is one of my favorite songs. And uh, she's kind of did for her wedding. So anyway, uh, but yeah, I want to I want to probably lay into this here. Um, I think what I'll do is I I'm gonna I'm gonna do three giveaways tonight. Uh, and I'll message the folks with uh, stuff after once the giveaway goes off. Uh, my, I'm giving a giveaway. I'm gonna start off with um, a ten dollar gift certificate to Cauldron Tower, for okay. folks. Uh, my friends, a good place to start. So does that sound good? The chat. I got a few people in here right now. I'm, I'm gonna get the uh, the real ones. The opportunity to jump in real quick. Yep. Um, so let me go ahead and start. Start. Ooh, that was, oh, that was wrong button. I need that. Button. I need that open. Um, where am I at here? Okay, cool. I haven't used as much too, so I'll take, take a shot here. But here we go. There it is. It should be the, uh, it should start up here in a second. You'll see it pop up and the instructions will be there. Um, you got to type in the command exclamation point heavy metal and you will enter the raffle. Um, you're here for us guys, but if winning something else would be cool, yes, winning is cool. Winning is fun. It's a good winning, feeling. It feels good. You got to chase that feeling, man. But uh, yeah, if you go ahead and type in an exclamation point with the uh, heavy metal, you will be entered to win the 10 thing. And then there it is. Yeah, so Streamlabs is telling you, Death Saves, you entered to win. Very cool. Uh, you guys got to give them some competition. So make sure you, you uh, put it in the chat uh, and the like. Okay, now I'll go for 15 minutes, so we got a little bit of time. All right, cool. So um, yeah, 2020, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start counting my stuff here. Uh, yep. The way I do this is I, I have... My numbers uh, 20 through number five are just a blob. I don't have them in any order. Um, honestly, they're in the order I downloaded the image files. Yeah. Uh, so it's, just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty arbitrary, guys. Um, so like, uh, don't uh, don't get kind of like hung up on it or anything like that too, um, and the like. Uh, the number one through four are kind of put in order, um, and I, use, I I do them in this way because like I make a square graphic and put it on Instagram, and Instagram needs to be very oriented or square graphics um i do have a few runner-ups i could talk about real quick um one of them for me was um the i really enjoy, and these are also i also enjoyed was like the new unleash the archers abyss was solid I, I enjoyed that i like unleash the archers um the uh i actually like the new draconian album uh i'm not sure if you're familiar with draconian much at all they're they're kind of like a gothic funeral yeah thing. yeah the, yeah they're, they're new albums are pretty damn good uh my my uh, the Buddhist band album was really good this year. Along the two, that I really enjoyed. Um, I'll tell Brian. Yeah, tell Brian. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I I got I'll put this for you guys too. So I I, I have a my my bottle record collection at home is about twenty seven hundred records. I actually got rid of about hundred records recently. Um, and I buy about if you guys are curious, I buy somewhere between two hundred to three hundred records a year. Wow. Thank you. Jesus. Thank you. yeah. I've only been, I've only been collecting since twenty fifteen. That's impressive. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so um, it's I, I do this for a reason, and it's because I feel bad for how much music I pirated in high school. So you're just kind of like <laughs> it's fucking kind of built. Like, redemption arc here. Yeah, it's my, it's my redemption arc to uh, to like to like you know, hey, I, I do appreciate you. I got I actually have money now, guys. Like, let me give I you promise. Money. <laughs> you know, I, I really want to try to do it. Uh, thank you, Master Matt. Yeah, you bet. Um, yeah, I hope I hope you guys win something here too. Um, yeah. But other other releases, uh, the new Death Death Cave was really good. My my buddy um, uh, Freiberger in my Wednesday game was super cool. Death Cave record really solid. 
the new Hex Vessel was really solid. I'm a big uh, Mac McNeely, I think his name is, uh, fan. I love Great Pleasures and all that stuff. The Witch Hazel record was a, was a runner-up. Um, didn't make my top 20. Um, yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, we talked about that a bit. I, you know, And once again, it's not like, if you, if you didn't make this, it's not like I think you suck. It's just that you didn't uh, make it. There were about three albums I did. I will say there was about three records I bought this year that, that once I got them on my table and listened to them at home, I really didn't like that much. But uh, oh, we won't talk about those. But that's only that's only three out of like that's only three out of like three hundred, so that's not a bad deal. Like <laughs> it's not bad. Um, I will say, uh, and I went and re-listened to it recently too. Was the uh, Molasses's record, um, the yeah, Remnants of the about. Devil's Blood, and actually that was actually really solid too. Um, but I, uh, I I recommend going back. This is much more psychedelic than than the Devil's Blood. Like much yeah. more um, organs and and kind of like that 60s, 70s feel. Which I really enjoyed. So, but um, yeah, man. All right, are we gonna do this adventure, Tucker? You gonna hold my hand? Let's get into it. Hold my hand. All right, here we go. Uh, what is my what's my first entry? Is I think it's my first entry. Oh, top number five to twenty. No particular order. Once again, no order. It's just a blob of stuff. So let's talk about the first one here. Uh, is a a Stormkeep. Uh, this is a this is a I have a, there's actually a, quite a few debut albums on my list this year. So there were a lot of Keep, debut albums that came out this year. A lot of debut albums came out this year. Um, Stormkeep is actually a, a black metal outfit out of Colorado, and this was on um, I think on Van Records, uh, which I've talked about how much I love that label, and it is straight up like fantasy black metal with um, like it's kind of got that lo-fi sound to it, that classic sound to it. Um, and there's some really cool Dungeon Sith mixed into it. Um, the whole album's only four tracks, but like, um, it's really solid. I won't kid you guys, this actually came very close to my top four. It, it, it almost broke the top four for me, um, and it got uh, edged out. Uh, my favorite track on it is the is the song of Lore. Uh, let me give you guys a link here in the chat to their uh, Bandcamp, so you can go and buy their thing, and I, they can actually get fucking money. Like actual money, actual money. You go in there. <laughs> I, well, how much? Let me see what thing. Let me see what the thing is. Like, okay, the album is seven bucks for digital, and they get a pretty big cut of that. That'll be nice for them. So yeah, you you know you can go and do this kind of stuff for them, and it's it's not hard. Go listen to it a few times. That's why they got band camps. They'll let you listen to it quite a few times before you buy. Um, I actually talked about that in my uh, when I did my I did my uh, uh, graduate work at UCLA on, on piracy communities. I talked about how, like, when I was a kid, I remember I bought, I think it was the second or third Stone Toe, I think it was the third Stone Toe Plaza record, and I listened, I, I walked out of Music Land, out of the mall, I sat on my, my disc outside of Music Land and listened to it, and I was like, this is, this fucking sucks, and so I marched back in and got my money back. Yeah. And, like, that's a pipe dream now, guys. That'll never happen. And um, so I'm really big on the, try, you know, give, give me a good preview, and Bandcamp will give you a pretty damn big preview, yeah. so... But yeah, so please, there's a link to Storm, Storm Keeps uh, Galdrum, a uh, highly recommended uh, killer black metal. Um, so, have you listened to this one, Tucker? Can I look at it? Uh, no. Uh, I know Sarah from Smolder in particular was a huge fan mm. of it, and she's kind of got a bug. She put a bug in my ear like yesterday to it, listen to it. Interesting, interesting fact, the cover is done by a guy named Ian Miller, who's actually done did a Magic the Gathering art years years back. That's sick. Back, uh, like for Mirage, like way when I was a kid and everything like that too. So I, I was, I was looking at it. And I recognized the lines, um, and uh, yeah, so it's kind of cool. Uh, but that, that's like kind of that's kind of a deep dig. Um, so let me go ahead and do the next one. So this is actually interesting. So the next one's Wayfair, a romance with violence. Uh, this has made a lot of people's list. Uh, Wayfair is, I think, also probably one of the best like American black metal bands. Interesting oh, enough, they actually, they actually sh what's up? Easily one of the best. Well, they actually share members uh, with, with uh, Stormkeep. There's actually uh, an overlap of members, uh, so they're kind of out from that area, like where Colorado is. Um, but this is like a more like it's not fantasy; it's more Western driven, very story oriented. Um, I really need to spin it because I was really, really big on World Blood when it came out. Mm. The, their last full length. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, I, I they're they're a band I think I slept on for too long, and uh, I think I, ha I have World Blood. I have a, I have a, I think they have one or two of their other records, but uh, yeah, um, a Romance of Violence. Uh, 
just I mean it blew me away when I listened to it. I, I threw that down and it was just it was just kicking kicking my butt the whole time. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Scott. This is a fantastic album. Um, I like that it paints the kind of West as this dirty picture. Yeah. Um, being that like growing up in California and like learning like history of of um, kind of like the Gold Rush and all that kind of stuff like that. Like I learned more of like the less sugar coated versions of it. Yeah, and exactly. uh, it, it's some dirty history and all that kind of stuff. And uh, there's been kind of an interest in that, too, regards to like stuff like Deadwood and all those kind of shows um, and the like, too. So I think my favorite track... Oh, and I'm also... I, my, other, my other note I left here, too, is I am a huge sucker for Tremolo. I I, yeah. I, I can't... It, it, it just gets to me... Uh, thank you for the follow, uh, Ulrich, the Dark Prince. That's cool. You got the wizard. Make sure you're entering the sweepstakes, guys. Yes, there's there's also a giveaway. Please uh, type in the um, uh, if you type in the command uh, exclamation point and then heavy metal, you will be entered. Um, I should be able to. Can I like tell it to rebroadcast that stuff? I don't know. Um, yeah, we're running raffles tonight. For, yes. For uh, oh, what's this? For Cauldron and Tower. Oh, Cauldron Tower. Look at that. Like like, like Superman, dude. Yes. Um, so let me put this in the real quick. Oh, there's a, there's a, there's a, okay, cool. So anyways, um, but yeah, I really enjoy this album, and uh, I've actually, I went back and re-listened to everything, and this one hit me a little bit harder than last time, but I think my favorite track on this one is um, The Iron Horse, Gallows Frontier Act 2. Okay. Um, yeah, the Stormkeep album was really good, dude. Like, I, I really can't say enough good things about that one. That one um, was insta buy, and I'm glad they, they got some stuff domestically to, to sell too. It's super handy. Um, but all right, moving on. Do I, I'm trying to let's see if I have anything here. Is not Black Metal. Kind of. Uh, I have the Bell Witch and Ariel Ruin uh, Stoogie and Bow uh, Volume One. Um, so this stuff is like, dude, it's Bell Witch. Uh, I love Bell Witch. I, I can I can always listen to Bell Witch and like escape. Bell Witch to me is, an ex- is the experience of listening. Like when I listen to Bell Witch, I can't put Bell Witch on casually. Yeah. I have to I have to um, like really give myself over to it. Um, and the thing is, like, I'm also a big folk music fan. Like I love neo folk. Uh, my favorite band is like one of my favorite bands is Curtain Ninety Three, um, and the bringing in um uh rl ruins uh what's his name eric uh i'm gonna i'm holding i don't butcher his name uh Mogrid, Mogridge, i think his name is um is brilliant so it's kind of br- putting these folk elements into the heavy doom the heavy like atmospheric elements of um bell which kind of like so bell which i always view as like this haunting and everything like that where like bringing the folk elements brings in kind of like like the storytelling of those hauntings yeah and so I, I really dug that um i listened to this one a few times over and uh definitely enjoyed it yeah it is it's definitely bell witch but it's bell witch with something more i know they're getting ready to tour i think they're touring with uh wolves in the throne room okay in Europe next year yeah um but yeah bell witch always takes me away uh and this was a new journey uh, my, my little notes i wrote myself uh my favorite track on here is the bastard wind um, but yeah, I can't say good, enough good things about that. Let me go put the link for this in the uh, chat. And thanks, guys, for chatting it up to and hit, hit, yeah. hanging out. Um, I don't know how much time is left on the, the giveaway. Oh, it's got like three and a half minutes. I got three entries, guys. There's still time to enter. Um, still time to enter. Yep. Um, so let's go ahead and raffle. what's that? Hit up that raffle. Hit up that raffle. All right. Let me get another one in here real quick. Um, let's see here. What's my next entry I want to do? Uh, anything else to say about this one, man? You good? Yeah. I'm good. All right. All right, here's like 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 one of my my uh, darker horse picks is Gold Recession. So Gold is actually I think is one of the tightest bands out there. Okay. Uh, I think that they have that they have uh, uh, their main guys a former member of the Devil's Blood. Because I can't I can't not not stop talking about that band because it's, it's the Devil's Blood is one of the best bands of all time. Um, this is actually kind of a weird thing to say as an album because it's more of like a compilation of three albums that were put out this year. Um, it's what's called the archive sessions, which are uh, basically demos and unreleased tracks they put out. Uh, another one is the bedroom sessions, which was the uh, two main members uh, just kind of hashing their songs out at, in their bedrooms at their house and everything like that without the full band. And the other one was called the isolation sessions, which was a live performance they did in April 
uh, okay. online through a streaming thing. And this is just basically all those put together on a single, on a, I think it's a quad LP. Um, but it's really, really good. Um, I like Gold a lot. They, their sound has definitely evolved um, from where they started, which was their initial stuff was much more, um, how do I want to put it, like, uh, it was much more psych rocky, uh, kind of like had some like kind of su- that kind of desert rocky. I felt like rock sound to it. Yeah. Um, but this one, um, Milena and Thomas uh, really nailed it on this one in terms of their home stuff. Um, and you can actually go watch. Actually, here's like the isolation sessions on YouTube. If you want to watch the, the live performance, uh, you can please watch it after this broadcast. Uh, you can watch it. You can watch here. Um, it's a really good, like about it's about a fifty minute set. Um, but this is the whole band, and they're actually all like socially distanced in the same room playing. Um, it's kind of oh. an interesting stuff to watch play. But I highly recommend that one. Um, but yeah, Gold Recession was. I, I love this. I, I love this band. Like I have all their stuff, and I will continue to buy all their stuff forever. I feel like their their music, aside from being technically like very tight. Um, it also promotes a lot of messages I, I enjoy. So it's it's got some deep feminist critique of society. It's got some um, very kind of socially conscious things, but it's done in much a, not a very direct way. Um, and I think Milena's vocals are just like they're unique. No, I don't think anyone sounds like her, um, which I really dig. So highly recommend Gold. I don't like. Let's see what I got here next. Um, Okay, good. Yeah, man. Yeah, the isolation were great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, all right, I appreciate that. Yeah, they're, they're great. the whole isol- isolation session is a whole series, by the way. For those that don't know, it's a whole series of like live performances of bands. Um, you can go and check it out on YouTube. They're, they're, they should be. I think that's on their on the isolation sessions channel. You can go take a look. All right, I'll move on here. Um, do you know these guys at all? Spell? Have you heard of these guys, Cam? Cam and his guys. You ever heard of this? Yeah. Okay, whatever. <laughs> They're, they're pretty good. So Spell's pretty good. This is our buddy Cam who came out and played. That's why I was super stoked to have Cam on, on, on the show. Uh, is because I think uh, Opulent Decay is a phenomenal record. Um, there are the entries are now closed, by the way, guys. So uh, I'll do another one a little bit here. Um, but uh, Spell's record, uh, which we kind, of, we kind of streamed a bit here um, in the, uh, before the show began a few times, uh, and I'll pick a winner if I have to get done to, to, to talking about Spell. Um, yeah, Spell and Cam are great. Like, I, I like just, I like how mellow their music is. Um, it doesn't, like, it hits hard at points, but it's never abrasive. Um, no one sounds like Cam, dude. No one's vocal sounds like Cam. It's very unique. It is, it is, it is, it is unique. It is unique. I, sorry, I can't, I, sorry, that's, that's a big pet peeve of mine. Is very unique. I can't stand that stuff because nothing's very unique. You're the one or you're not. <laughs> okay, but anyways, um, sorry, pet peeve. It's, it's, I, I teach I teach writing guys in English, and, and it's uh, anyways. Sorry, I, I feel bad talker now. I feel like I, I you're fine. It's okay. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed this release this year. Uh, I, I probably listen to this on repeat in my car, play video games, hanging out. Probably. Probably the second most of any album this year. Um, my most one will be in my my, uh, my top four. But um, uh, front to back, it's a great album. Um, it was an immediate pre order. He got a good distribution on it too. Um, the synths on this album, the the synthesizers done by Graham, really fill the void of the tracks. Like there's always something in the background going on. There's always some kind of listen to. There's always kind of like yeah. everything kind of bleeds into everything else, and I really like and the synths do that. Um, and then Al Lester on drums, uh, everything's just paced. There's a, the journey is paced. Um, I, and that's kind of how I think about albums, if you guys haven't caught on to it yet. I think about albums as a journey. Like, you're starting someplace, and you're going to the next place, and everything like yeah. that, too. So, all right, well, folks, let me go ahead and get a winner real quick uh, for this. I'm going to pick a winner, and we'll do another one um, when I get a little farther into the countdown here. Uh, get a winner. Let's see here. I, I guess I click pick a winner. And it is, oh, my God, it is Scott. Scott, <laughs> you win. like you already have all the Cauldron and Tower stuff. I swear that was that Streamlabs did that. It wasn't me, um, but there you go. Uh, you'll get a ten dollars gift card. I'll send that to you guys after the the stream's over and everything. Like that too through uh, the Twitch chat. Okay, I, I got to generate the codes and all that crap. So that's funny. <laughs> so when I was a kid, we used to do these PTA drives at, at school. You know, membership drives. Yeah. 
and the, the whoever got the most of them got like a twenty-five dollar, thirty dollar gift card to like the warehouse music or whatever it is. And I won every single year. And people were like, people, like, I, like the, the second year, people were like, oh, I can't believe John won again. Third year, people were like, it's a fucking scam. But like, you know, like the kids knew it was a scam, or whatever it was. <laughs> um, sorry, sorry, I had a lot of people in my family that wanted to be uh, engaged in my education. Um, all right, get back to it here. Uh, so my next release I want to talk about is Bill Fisher, dude. Bill Fisher's album, Mass Hypnosis and the Dark Triad. This was a dark horse of an album. A lot of people um, slept on it. And I'll talk about who Bill Fisher is real quick. So Bill Fisher is AKA Brother Bill from uh, Church of the Cosmic Skull. Yeah, you talked to me about this one. And Church of the Cosmic Skull is like bonkers, dude. It's like really light. Like, I mean, literally, like, light coming out of them and everything like that. You've seen their videos. Uh, they do some great cover songs, uh, like, some yep. great Thin Lizzy kind of cover songs. Um, they are, like, it's this kind of cult thing going on, but it's very bright and fun. Um, and uh, Bill Fisher did the solo album he put out. Um, uh, if you want to give it to someone, what, I, what I'll do for you, Scott, if you want to give you got someone you want to give it to, let me know. I'll, we'll, we'll hold on to it, too. Um, or I might, I could always just double it up for the next giveaway if you want me to. Too. I'll do a bigger giveaway. I'll do like instead of doing a ten dollar one, I'll do a twenty dollar one for the next one if you want me to. Um, pay it forward. But yeah, uh, Bill Fisher dropped this out of nowhere, and it's a it's a solo album. Um, it ha- it opens up with one of the nastiest, dirtiest riffs I've ever heard. Like it's like it's like dirty, sexy stuff, man. Like, um, but yeah, I I really listen to this one. Um, it's uh, I put this on. I, I get a pretty mellow on it. I like his voice. I like how kind of he he kind of makes me feel relax a bit. Um, it doesn't have that energy. The Church of the Cosmic Skull is very high energy. This doesn't have that high energy, but it's still there's still energy. Um, and it's a little more evil, but it's sexy. Okay. It's a very sexy yeah. record, guys. Um, my favorite track on it is All Through the Night. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, I like I actually I won't kid you guys this is actually one of my favorite album covers of the year too because I like the I like the cover of him holding the prism and he's like looking up to the prism but then you get the the front version of the of the eyes and they look evil like I mean he's an evil looking dude when he wants to be um, oh yeah but yeah uh, Bill Fisher uh, Mass Hypnosis and the Dark Triad and by the way that title will make a lot of sense when you op- if you get the album and open up the poster it makes way too much sense uh, <laughs> it gets a little conspiracy theory and everything too so highly recommend uh, this one very sexy yeah when you, what I want you to do what your homework to, this week today Tucker is I want you to listen to just like the first 20 seconds of that album <laughs> <laughs> um, all right so let's um let me go ahead and keep it on uh and what do i have next uh next it was for token ruin this is another debut album i don't know what it was did everyone just say like let's go have a black metal record this this year yeah it's like it's like everybody wrote and recorded a black metal record last year and it was just like okay yep yeah, we'll put it out 2020 Shit. and <laughs> yeah and it, it's just good uh, I, I listened. This was kind of a late one. I, I kind of had it in my my pile for a while, um, and it got kind of pushed back and pushed back. But then I, I finally listened to it, and it's really good. I think these guys are on uh, pros- is it prosthetic records? Uh, Could be. They're pretty pretty good label, um, and they've been putting out a lot of stuff. I think they put out the Wayfarer album too. I think they put out the uh, the Bell Witch album, um, stuff like that. But yeah, this one was really good. Um, it is uh, out of they're out of Virginia. So they got out of Colorado, so I'll give them that. Um, it does, this album is really interesting because like it, it is like symphonic black metal. Mm-hmm. And it approaches at points power metal. And Which I think good symphonic black should. Yeah, exactly. And to me, it was um, like the melodic elements were perfect, uh, really good orchestration. Um, I, I, one of my notes I wrote to myself is if you want to get pumped for your upcoming D and D combat, this is the album for you. Uh, I, I like I, I like I always like power metal. I love power metal. Um, I am just very I listen to so much power metal at a point where like I am now very picky about my power metal. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. So this was this was this really blended those elements that I like for power metal so so well. Um, okay, let me see where I'm at in my list real quick here. Okay, cool. Let me go ahead. And, um, 
I'm gonna, I'll stop I'll stop another giveaway real quick, guys. Let me uh let me go and kick that over. And um let me do oops. Oh there it is. Can I duplicate this? Okay, let me go ahead and do this one for let me do another one here. I'm gonna do a 20 hour one here uh for the all right, and there's, a, all right, so I start up another giveaway, guys. It should kick over here. Uh, same rules, you enter with the command head metal. This one's for 20 bucks. Uh, it'll get you some, actually get you some some nice stuff out of my store, too, for 20 bucks. So uh, please get on that. Uh, yeah, let but, me move on, though. Uh, the four token album, though, I'm not sure what I want to say about it. Um, it just it just, it just hit me in the right points at the right times with um, the symphonic elements. It wasn't, um, it wasn't overdone, I guess, so. Go check this one out. Um, all right, what do I got here? Judicator, let there be nothing. Yep. Uh, I talked about this a bit with Tucker. Uh, this, these guys are straight up blind guardian worship. Blind like, guardian worship. Uh, I think that album is a concept album around uh, the Byzantine general Belisarius, which is awesome, awesome <laughs> history, awesome deep history. Yeah, so they kind of take that uh, where where Guardian is very fancy oriented. This goes into historic elements, and they even have Hanzi on their last album, and they brought in Hanzi from Blind Guardian to guest on their album, which ain't bad for a, a small band out of Arizona. Uh, and they actually met at a Blind Guardian concert, like of course. Um, I, how do you do that? You just go, you, you go up to someone, and you go, "Hey, uh, that up there, do you want to be that?" Like is, that, like is that is that how it works or uh, I feel like that's exactly how it happened with Mastodon though because they all met the uh, the High on Fire show. That's a I'm I'm Mastodon's a very divisive topic for me. I will say that I will say right. that I don't right. I, I I'm trying to keep a rep here. I'm trying to get people to actually like me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, this one this one kind of came out and I slept on these guys, unfortunately. Um, and I, I really wish I knew about them earlier. Um, Blind Guardian, I love Guardian. Uh, I One of my first dates with my wife, I took her to a Blind Guardian concert. My wife's not a metal person. And she loves Blind Guardian. Like, she actually really enjoys it. She likes the, uh, she likes Blind Guardian because like they go up there and they have fun playing. Yeah. And they got... And the thing about Guardian I like so much is like they have nothing to prove to anybody. Like with like we've been around since the '80s, so who cares? Um, but Judicators, uh, they they isn't this that they sound like Blind Guardian? They they capture that element, but they bring in different elements too. Um, my favorite track on here is Gloria, and Gloria does some weird stuff that I hadn't heard anywhere else. Um, this kind of like. Um, I don't know, like, it, it kind of mixes in, and, and I and I feel bad just comparing these guys to Blind Guardian so much, but I have a feeling they wouldn't give a shit, and they probably like it. Yeah. Um, but it's, I mean, it's just like a solid, it's, I'm hard-pressed to find good, like, American power metal to this quality. I guess that's what, that's what I'm trying to say. So, it's damn good. Uh, but yeah, these guys are damn, damn good. Uh, let me go ahead and, did I, put, I, did put, I did not put the link in the chat yet, let me put this one in real quick. And once again, go buy, guys, go buy some stuff on Bandcamp. Bandcamp's cool. All right, let me move on here. Uh, sorry, let's keep on this fanboying about Judicator. Uh, Oliver, Flowers of Evil. Okay, so Oliver, we all know, is like are like the like, legendary black metal dudes. Yeah. Like, we all know that stuff. Uh, they have this like trilogy of albums that like just kind of stand the test of time and some of the best stuff ever. But I like one thing I like about Oliver always is that they evolved. They didn't mm -hmm. stick around. They didn't just like say we have to keep on doing the same thing. We're gonna do what we want to do, and Flowers of Evil really takes that uh, to the next to the next uh, level. Um, this is a, actually a pretty groovy record at points. Um, it's kind of got some it's got some pop elements um, with some psychedelic elements. Um, it reminds me a lot, and, and in a good way because I, I have a bad relationship with this band, but like Pink Floyd. Um, Here's my thing about Pink Floyd, guys. It's not that I don't like Pink Floyd. It's that all my friends in high school like Pink Floyd. Wouldn't shut the fuck up about it. Yeah, yeah. And you know when like when one of my one of my buddies comes back and has like a Pink Floyd tattoo, and you're like, oh. and you're like, dude, you're 17, bro. Like, come on, man. Um. Anyways, but uh, but it, it kind of reminds me of Pink Floyd points. Uh, with and I will and here's the blend. Here's the blend. Pink Floyd with Depeche Mode. I like that. Fucking weird. A lot. But guess what? All of them are geniuses and they can fucking pull it off and they do with this album, Flowers of Evil. I really enjoyed this one. It is a very, very sophisticated album. 
Um, yeah, if you if you if you if you fancy yourself as a, a, a sophisticated person in the world, this is the album for you. A sophisticated and worldly person. <laughs> so yeah, I, I like this one a lot. I put it on and I couldn't stop listening to it uh, when I when I first heard it. Uh, my favorite track on was Russian Doll. That's a really strong one too. All right, my next one. Uh, this is an album I've seen on a lot of people's lists, and um, it's like it's on their list for a good reason. Uh, it is the new Spirit of Drift record. Okay. Um, I really, really like this one. I, I actually, confession time, I did not like Spirit of Drift that much when they first came out. I, I've been sleeping on that band pretty hard. I'm going to be honest. Um, I, I jumped on them originally because uh, the guys in Chemist highly recommended them. And I okay. was like, all right, you know, I, I trust Chemist. I'll, I'll go get it. And I got it, and I, I thought it was okay. I didn't think it was great, but I thought it was okay. Um, and then this is a band that, once again, kind of they've evolved their sound. They've changed it up. Um, the new one is uh, just kind of classic heavy metal, but I, I have here, God, I have like, I have so I, I feel bad reading my notes to you guys because they're, they're fucking corny. Um, but this, I, I wrote, this album pulls on classic heavy metal, but in a much more, with a much more modern edge. Okay. That's the most contrived shit I've ever read in my life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's on your top 20 list, uh, Matt. Yeah, for sure. I've heard that I saw this on a ton of lists. Um, I saw this in uh, Decibel's top 40 list. Um, I saw this on like at least three other lists. Um, and rightfully so. It just rocks. It's a good rocking album. Um, it's got an album cover by my boy um, Adam Burke. I mean, but a lot of albums tonight we've looked at have an album covered by Adam Burke. Um, that's how you know you're somebody now, I guess. Um, and uh, so it's really cool to like uh, see this one come out. I enjoyed. I did enjoy this one a lot. A lot. Like when I put it on, um, I rocked out, man. You know. So it's, it's good. Good heavy metal. It's good heavy metal. Uh, all right, my next one is has this one has been spoiled uh you guys are well aware dude body count carnivore yep uh so this is this is actually one of two entries on tonight that do not have a band camp entry uh because they don't need it no you know, they're gonna move product because they got iced tea and uh i uh this one's funny because uh, i i teach a class i i use a book called uh, original gangsters uh, talking about like the rise of gangster rap, and I have a lot of students that have no idea that Ice T was a rapper. Yeah. Let alone he's in a heavy metal band, and been in a heavy metal band for a very long time, and not just a heavy metal band, but a prolific heavy metal band. <laughs> uh, one that was very controversial, one that's put out a lot of stuff, um, and uh, it's. Uh, I was reading it too because was, I was telling Tucker the the album cover is done by the guy that did the uh, Ghost Meloria cover. Yep. Melora, yeah. So it's kind of it's kind of interesting. A really complicated cover, but uh, my wife's an art teacher. She saw this. She was like, "Holy shit! Like, this is brilliant." And uh, there's a lot happening. There's a lot happening. Um, they brought in um, and it, this album for me. Hit. Uh, it came in the mail right after uh, George Floyd's death, and it really hit for me in that regard. Um, I have. I now have a very distinct emotional tie to this album. Um, the emotional tie to this album has done nothing but gotten stronger um, because the album has some guest vocalists on it. Uh, Amy Lee guest from uh, Evanescence guest on a, on a thing. Hey, but by the way, if you guys told me when like I was like early in college that like Amy Lee and Ice T would be on an album together, I would have told you you're a fucking liar. Yeah. But here we are. <laughs> and, uh, um, but uh, more importantly to me, uh, this has Riley Gale on it. Um, he actually did a video. Uh, there's the video for the song on there, um, "Point the Finger," uh, which I'll put. I'll post a link to real quick. Um, it might be the last thing that he was reported on. Yeah, I I don't I can't say that one way or the other, but like yeah, I, I think there's a good chance of it. Uh, and yeah, that for me is kind of a, a tough. Uh, uh, there's, like, there's a lot of emotions in this record, and I think that like sometimes and we all kind of realize this with like stuff like you go back and listen to Bob Dylan or whatever it is it, it's, it's when the, it's when it came out that, that affects like how how strong that album is for the time and I think this was a, this was a really good piece of that um, you have experience the record uh, my wife actually likes this one my wife doesn't my wife's not really big into the metal or stuff like that like she thinks like especially the black metal shit she can't she can't stand it but um, body count she was like oh yeah this is fucking dope like she really got into it uh, 
and I told her it was iced tea. She was, she you know, she once I told her it was iced tea, she she recognized. Um, <laughs> but yeah, give that one to listen to uh, for sure. Uh, and uh, let uh, let Ice T. By the way, Ice T has like one of the best Twitter for, for, uh, presences ever. Like he he people talk shit to him. He's fucking smacks him down. Uh, I love him. Um, but uh, yeah, the whole album just hits for me. It's got good funk. It's got those those good riffs. Um, there's a great cover of Ace of Spades on it. I uh, there's a there's a re um, imagining of uh, Six in the Morn, which we'll consider one of the very first gangster rap tracks. So yeah, I I got, I got a lot to say about this one. All right. Moving on, uh, let me load up my copy thing here real quick. So this was an album that I had, I've been anticipating a while, and it came out, and it is uh, Throne of Irons Adventure One. Uh, and so oh. these guys, uh, do you have anything to say about this record, Tucker? What's that? Do you have anything to say about this record? Uh, it it should have came out well. It should have came out in 2019, but it it didn't. <laughs> It had been done for a long time. That's I mean I've, I've heard that story from a few people like in terms yeah. of that happens the album to get kind it of it had been done for it. a long time. Uh, we ended up pushing it back to 2020 so we could release it for Up the Hammers Fest and then Up the Hammers Fest didn't happen. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I was really eager for this release to come out uh, when when you guys when I first heard about you guys. Uh, honestly, the the big thing that cemented like me like the the cemented this your band for me was your your Gen Con story. Um, and as really? fu- yeah, as fucked up as it was, <laughs> it showed me that you guys are real. I actually had to tell that story again today. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Well, that, that's good because that, that, that's how you work through your trauma. You tend to you kind of, you kind of work through it. Um, but it was like, uh, and it's funny because I told that story to a few friends of mine that are that are deep in the industry. will say, and they were like, that, that sounds all right. Uh, so that means you're you're in the club. Your congratulations. You, you All the, right, you awesome. The, you got the. They're like, yeah, no. It sounds like you got the real Gen Con experience. Um, <laughs> like shit. Um, the frustrating one. <laughs> I I uh, yeah. Well, before um, I, uh, I I talked to Tucker. I met him. Um, I was so for this album. Um, it's got Dave Paul Seymour cover, which is super cool. Um, I like it because it just kind of says fuck it and just starts rocking. Like literally says fuck it and yeah. rocks. Um, I, I like that, like, it's unabrazened kind of, like, D&D metal. It, it's not trying to, like, like sugarcoat the fantasy metal elements of it. There's some people that do that stuff where, like, they're like, I'm going to do fantasy metal. And it's like they try to, like, they give their own asses about it of, like, how grandiose their fantasy metal is and, like, all and like like all the kind of stuff like that. You see, you see there's a bit of, like, some power metal bands. I'll say that. I'm trying not to pick on power metal bands tonight too much, but there are some that do that. Um, this one I like because it's just that kind of, like, dirty fantasy metal. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's definitely, like, a deeper alternate reality meta for this band that I'm kind of trying to dig into when I make music. That I'm trying to pretend that there's, like, an alternate reality version of the same band. Mm-hmm. Like, 82 or 83 actually recording this shit on a shitty task game in a basement somewhere. And that's the general vibe I'm trying to get, is that it's, it's, it's being tongue-in-cheek because, like, that's all we know. <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, no, I, I've um, I've listened to this one quite a, quite a few times. Uh, it just kind of like slams throughout throughout the whole thing. That's why I like it. It just it just has a good pace to it. Um, it uh, what was I oh, sorry? I lost my notes here. Um, yeah, I wrote just riding a battle heavy metal. Just riding a battle heavy metal with tales of the tabletop. And that's why I like it. It's tales of the tabletop. Yeah. It's it's not tales of like they tell you about a cool time. I rode the unicorn to save the princess. Yeah. Like. Um, that's that's people have kind of gotten into, into us like oh you guys should wear like armor and stuff on stage it's nah. like no because our characters aren't our characters in the yeah. game our characters are the people at the table yeah besides you, you'd probably get a, you'd probably get a, a C and D from Sabaton or something yeah um, for sure <laughs> guys don't you guys if you if you if you if you got like big doing techno music don't go into heavy metal all right. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm sorry, man. I I I had to go. I've gone to Sabaton shows because my friend like loves Sabaton, and I'll be like, I'll go. Um, and uh, oh man, I, I yeah, Sabaton's Sabaton's a rough one for me, guys. They put on a good show. I'll give them that. They put on a nice show. I give them that. Right. I did have a pro- I did have a problem going to a concert of theirs in Berkeley, very liberal town, 
and being in a room full of several hundred people uh, all chanting uh, Kill Persians because that's one of their song lyrics and everyone oh, chants great. it. And Amazing. that was really fucking awkward for me to be in. I will say that. So yeah. I will say I appreciate the historical elements of what you're talking about. Uh, you gotta be a little careful, but you guys gotta be a little careful. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So, but yeah, Adventure One, guys, go pick it up. Uh, it's really good. Uh, I, I, I slept on the vinyl, which I feel bad about. Uh, I really wish I had one of the gold ones, but that's okay. I'll get over it. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I just like, I, it, it's just unabashed. Like, I don't want to say nerd rock or geek rock. I don't like that term, but it's, it's like tabletop rock. Yeah. We'll call it tabletop rock. Uh, okay. All right. My next one is uh, The Wizard. Anyone, you, you know this one? Yeah. This album's fucking sick, dude. That cover's baller. The too. cover is baller, too. Um, so for those who don't know, uh, the this is uh, Will Freed from Heavy Chain Records, uh, latest band. Uh, he is a... Um, they're out of Australia. And one of my favorite bands, like one of my favorite albums of all time, are the Tarot Records. Uh, Reflections and the Warrior Spell are f- just freaking amazing, back front to back. And when you had a new project come out, The Wizard, uh, I I had to jump on it. So where Tarot is a very kind of like mellow, it's like those mellow kind of melodic elements of Hawkwind, you know, yeah. where you're kind of you're kind of on the journey and, and it, it's, it's feeling kind of good. That to me is much more of um, Tarot. Wizard's like the the dirty, nasty parts of fantasy. Um, and for me. It uh, it really um, it's a much more uh, occult journey, occult and dungeony. I, I had to write the I actually wrote the word dungeony in my notes. Uh, a, a more occult and dungeony evil. Uh, there's some badass guitar solos on this. Um, this is a band that I slept on I think for a while. Um, Funny fact, I actually ordered two copies of this record. I haven't done that for a long time, or I bought multiple copies of a record. Are uh, they different, different colored? No, no, I, I actually ordered, there's only one color, but I actually ordered it twice. Um, because I, I thought I ordered it, and then I, I was like, oh, I should order that record, and then I didn't, I forgot to check my other orders, and I oh, apparently had ordered it. Shit. Uh, but that's okay, because I'm giving it to one of my friends for Christmas. And he'll love it. Yeah. So, but yeah, give this one a listen. Um, it's just kind of a cool little journey. It's kind of like like an evil-y kind of cult record, um, but not heavily so. Like more of like if you're if you're if think of it as like 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 where Adventure One is like here's us the tabletop. This is like the Dungeon Master's perspective. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can is that it. fair? Like the, yeah. the, the like the uh, yeah Adventure One. I feel is very much from the player's perspective. Yeah. Okay. All right, so yeah, this, it's kind of a much more like, yeah, you know. All right, um, but hey, we got another giveaway done. Uh, I got uh, I got some people here. Let me go ahead and hit the uh, pick a winner, and our winner is Massacre Matt. Do you know Massacre Matt? I don't know Massacre Matt. I don't. I don't. Massacre Matt, congratulations, uh, you won. I will uh, shoot you a message after the. Maybe I do. I don't know. After the whole show. Okay, I'll shoot you a message here on, on, on uh, Twitch to get you in there. Um, I also want to thank uh, Tucker for hanging out here because this is kind of a long-haul one. I know it's later for you too, man. So, but yeah, that was that's uh, that, the wizard. Um, and I like that it's called the wizard. It's not wizard, not the wizard. It's the wizard. Like there's like the apostrophe D. Yeah. And that's, I don't know what that, how to pronounce that, but it's, I, I go the wizard. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a good album, so yeah, I highly recommend that one. Like the um, deep afterthought. <laughs> maybe the typo. Who does? All right. Uh, I still think my favorite story about like like kind of a weird naming scheme was uh was is Jerry only the of the Misfits? You know about that story? Mm-hmm. Oh, so uh, he's like he's got the kind of Italian name, and like he was they they put it in the yeah. lyric notes, and then like they uh they they misspelled it once, and so he says he said I just told us to put Jerry only. And like they, they literally <laughs> put Jerry on. <laughs> That's funny. And it stuck. Um, you know, so I, I always love those kind of stories. Where, ah, ah, fucking do it. And he's like, all right. Like, well, that's not what I meant, but you know what? Here we are. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, we only got a few more here in the 20. Is uh, a band out of Spain called Witch Tower. Um, these dudes, 
They rock. Uh, this is kind of like very early Iron Maiden. Okay. Um, if you like early early Iron Maiden, uh, the first few, the first two records, this is for you. Um, it's I, I I wrote my notes. It's the kind of stuff you'd listen to with headphones and a blacklight poster. Um, get on this one, jump on it. I um, I'm not sure what to say about it, guys. It just rocks front to back. Uh, the, there's a lot of diverse sound in it, so not all the songs don't all just sound like Iron Maiden in that sense. Like they kind of like they they kind of fluctuate. I guess Maiden does too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really like this one a lot. Um, I put this on a few times, just kind of like walked away from. Like I was, I, I had it on my vinyl record probably the first time I listened to it, but then I listened to it through my electronic means, and I kind of walked away from it a few times. And came back. Um, I think my favorite track on here is uh, Mrs. Mrs. Artisan was a really good song, um, but the songs actually have a good diversity of, of sound in them. To be honest, like I really can't good. say enough about that. Yeah, I, I like it when like you get that kind of like. Um, it's, it's the same thing as like with opening bands, dude. We're talking about those idle hands and like you know in King Diamond, it's like have people that sound different, dude. Like uh, don't just be one giant block of like the same thing over and over again. Um, keep that diversity alive. It helps a lot. All right, move on. Uh, Eternal Champion, Ravening Iron. Ravening Iron, though. Hey, what's up? That Ravening Iron, though, that's a good record. It, it is a good record, and I want to talk about this. Was actually uh, this was actually at the bottom of my top twenty. Uh, this this came close to getting bumped out, and this is the album actually I had. I I saw a lot of lists, and I have a lot of kind of thoughts on in terms of that. Yeah. Um, I think it is. I don't feel bad because like I feel like Jason's gonna see this. He's gonna kick the shell at me. Um, but, uh, it, it's. There's like three songs on here I fucking really really like, and I feel like there's a re-recorded song from like like the the first single. Um, yeah, War at the Edge of the War or the End. Yeah, and and I kind of felt like um, this album's biggest problem is the hype that was going into it. I feel like we all wanted a lot more from a tr- from a troll champion, and I don't think it was realistic for us to expect more. Um, I I really wanted I guess like what I want to say is I wanted a bigger album I guess I wanted like a double LP I wanted more recording I wanted like this like, huge experience um, I thought that was the direction they were going to go was like do the, the whole like listen to the album like how they the giant experience and I didn't get that but that's but the, pro, the reason why is because that was all on me that was my expectations um, and it wasn't what they did, and that, that's okay. That, that's fine. That's how that works. I, I shouldn't put that kind of pressure on them. Um, I like Ravening Iron songs. Actually, one of my favorite songs of the year. Um, yeah, I think there's there's uh, it. Uh, it's a little divisive. I've seen them appear on some people's list. I see some people just kind of go ah, whatever. Um, so I wrote, I wrote for my notes. It's just it's short. Um, has even has kind of re- has a re-recorded track. I think the the, high, the the hopes were super high, and but if I put if I put aside my own desires and my own uh, expectations, it stands by itself as a good album. So that that's kind of where I'm gonna go with it. Um, I just want I just want there to be more. I guess that's what it is. I wanted I yeah. want more. I I still uh, <clears throat> they're label mates of ours. Yeah, and like Jason's a homie. I want more songs <laughs> I, I, I'm greedy I just want no. more no, uh, I do I do I do like it more than armor of iron though and like I can only say that because I when it, after Raven and iron came out I was listening to it like multiple times a day mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I haven't I admittedly like I haven't listened to that much new music this year that's mm-hmm. why I'm paying so much attention and opening up every single link you drop in here because I see I've listened to like maybe three new records no. this year but Mm. I, I, I listened to Ravening Iron multiple times per day since it came out, and it, it's that Coward's Keep, yeah, kind of Bathory breakdown. God damn. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is actually the only album on here I don't have on vinyl right now because it got delayed. So uh, yeah, but I, I actually and, broke oh my, my rule. God, what delay? <laughs> I, I broke my rule for this one um, because uh, I, I was listening to it and. It's one of those things where no one would shut the fuck up about it. So I was like, I gotta, I gotta listen to it before everybody ruins it for me by by talking about it too much. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, 
Does D does Ch- Eternal Dragon have roots in gaming D? I don't know if they game. I don't know if Jason games, but they read a lot of fantasy. Yeah, like it's there. There, Jason is. He is the biggest fanboy of like. He's a big Lovecraft guy now. He's a big Lovecraft guy. He's into Howard. He's into he's into Moorcock. They don't. I don't think any of them game though. Yeah, we well, should change that. We should get him on the show. Um, I mean, he probably would. I don't know what his internet situation is like. I know he lives in a in a similar. Really small town, yeah. Like I do, so I'm not sure what his setup's like. I, I have to ask. Uh, I think Jerry knows. Jerry knows him from the hardcore scene because that's where those guys come from. Is the hardcore yeah, scene? Yeah. So yeah, they're a bunch of hardcore dudes that decided to play heavy metal <laughs> and, and do well at it. <laughs> All right, it's awesome. Uh, so here we go. Uh, I have I have one last piece of my numbers five to twenty. Uh, this one made a lot of lists, and it was a late entry for me too because I was waiting for it to come on vinyl. I didn't want to li- this was an album I really wanted to listen to on my home system because I wanted like the fuck experience. Uh, it is uh, Emma Ruth Rendell and Thou. Uh, May our chambers be full. Yeah, um, dude. Uh, I really wasn't sure I was gonna write about this album or what I was gonna say about it. Actually, I have no notes, but I will tell you what Freiberger said about it uh, from Death Cave. Um, he was like. He was worried that it was just going to be here's Emma Ruth Rendell, here's Thou, they mash up, and the whole record is that mashup. And it wasn't. That no. that does happen. That does happen. Correct. It, it still sounds like Emma Ruth Rendell, and it still sounds like Thou, but it ain't that. But it blends. It's just a mashup. They, they move in that whole... They, instead of making like this like point of those two bands, they make a space of those two projects, and they move around that space so much. So like a single song... Is like it's like three. It's like a, if if they did three different albums in one song. Like, like it's like three different kind of like uh, modes, and it was organic. It's very organic. That's a good way to put this record. It's a very organic record. It doesn't feel like they came in with a vision. Yeah, they, they let it kind of happen. Um, and that's that's why I re- I love when Val does releases with other bands and other artists. Is they they write off of whoever's. There with them. Yeah. I am uh yeah, my favorite track is out of existence. Um I have the I have the limited release. I have the one with uh Helm of Sor- Sorrows, I think it is, or something like that, or whatever it's called. Um and uh yeah, I don't this one is kinda like I just knew I Ember of Rebel had one of my favorite albums, uh, On Dark Horses is one of my favorite albums of all times, and it, it, it I think it was my top album of last year. Um and she's actually one of my wife's favorites. Um, what's really funny about Emma Ruth Rendell's, I know of her through Marriages. That's that's the band I, I and that's how I knew of Draft Majesty too. Was they were in, they were, they had that band here, Marriage. Marriage is amazing. Um, I saw them with uh, Helms Ali in like a I mean a, like a a shit tiny room at the back of back of a bar in San Francisco. It was super cool. Um, and she just struck me, and I I love Emma Ruth, man. I, I can't I can't get enough of her. Like um, that cover they did for uh, of uh, Running Up the Hill with a. Uh, uh, two minutes to midnight. Yeah, the, that was incredible. So, yep. um, I yeah, I, I love his album. Uh, it has great sounds. All of it. it's just a big. It's a big space to work in, and they work in the space. They they. It's a it's a very spacious album. Um, highly recommended. All right. So that's my recap. I put a little image up of my of my numbers five to twenty. That's the image I'm gonna post on my Instagram when I post up this giant thing. Um. Kind of recap again: uh, Stormkeep, Wayfarer, Fort Token, uh, Bell Witch, and Aerial Ruin, Gold Spell, Bill Fisher, Judicator, Oliver, Spirit of Drift, Body Count, Throne of Iron, Eternal Champion, The Wizard, Witch Tower, um, Emma Ruth Rundle, and Thou. Uh, any any comments for me, like Tucker, about on my music taste? To tell me how much how much I, I have no taste? Except for I, 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 I have like one good band on that whole list, I and mean, you can tell me that. You you you, you were de- you were kind of self deprecating a little bit and be like, shit, am I gonna have anything on here other than black metal? And you didn't have that much black metal. No, I kind of front, I kind of front loaded it. Yeah, I think I front loaded it. I kind of I folk, I have I think I have one two three black metal releases on there. Yeah. Yep. Um. Yeah, Wafer is a great band. Yeah, I, I, but I like my list so far, and like I said, I'll post this on my Instagram, post it on my Twitter, so you guys can go and review this and everything like that too. But, but that was all arbitrary order. Now yeah. we're getting into a very distinct order. Okay, this is where yeah, I, 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 I it. yeah, I'm gonna, I might, I might get a little mean. Uh, yeah, fine. But uh, I'm gonna get on here. Oh, sorry, wrong, uh, wrong button here. Um, 
My top four 2020 by only play winner and double team and here with Tucker and I'm curious to hear Tucker's reaction. And I know Tucker, my number one, I still haven't seen it on his list. You mentioned that last week too, and man. It's, no, it was been more and more list, and I still haven't seen it. I'm mad. I'm getting mad about it, but I'm going to okay. give them their All justice. Right. I'm going to we'll give them their there. justice. We'll uh, we have some posters. We have some posters in here. Stormkeep, yes, a lot of rad stuff. Okay, yeah, please listen to all this stuff. Like I said, listen to it. I post the Bandcamp links because if you buy this record from Band, if you buy any of our Bandcamp, you will give money to them to the band. Yeah. You will get put money we'll in their up, pocket. Man. Okay, and it's it's hard for it's hard for bands out there. Um, I I can only support so many bands, guys. I can only do so much myself, man. He, he can't can. do it himself. <laughs> I can't do it myself. Uh, uh, Tucker, I, you know what you should give me for Christmas is a back brace because I can't carry this whole industry myself. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Top four of 2020. Let me get my link loaded here and uh, the like. All right, number four. Old Sorcery Sor- Sorrow Crown. Okay. Okay. Old Sorcery largely is considered a kind of dungeon synth band. Sorrow Crown is black metal and dungeon synth merged in perfect harmony. You linked now for for uh, Sorrow Crown. Oh, sorry, I have the wrong link. Ah, let me get that. Let me, let me go ahead and get that one here. My bad, guys. I, that's why I get for copy and paste and everything. Uh, whew, that was embarrassing, man. Oh. I, yeah. Fuck it, we'll do it live. All right, here we go. Okay, uh, boom, there it is. Okay, cool. So um, there is the Star Crown link. Uh, this album, dude, is like it's it's like it's this dark adventure. It, it's it's a crypt. It's dirty and scary. Um, it's what like I like my D and D games to be kind of like. Um, uh, it it uh, it. It has these really. It's only four tracks. Each track is like pretty lengthy. Um, you know, they're talk. You're talking like each. The shortest song on it is 13 minutes long. Shit. There's a, there's a, there's a 19 minute track, a 16 minute track, a 13 minute track, and a 21 minute track. And each one is its own kind of like instance. It's its own kind of like darkness. Um, some of the there's like a huge like uh, movements of, of dungeon synth, and then it goes into this black metal like like scary, just like vicious vocals. Um, it sounds like shit, which is what I want from my black metal in some regards. Yeah. Um, it, it's remnant of like the um, it's remnant of like some of the early Norwegian stuff, um, but it has that fancy element. Uh, it brings me back. I like this album a lot. When I put it on, uh, I kind of just put it on my record player, and I started making coffee or breakfast. And I was like, I kind of like stopped for a moment. I was like, I was like, where the fuck am I? I was like, I was being taken away. I was being taken away. So yeah, I cannot recommend this one enough. Um, I really, really like this one. And this was the one that beat out uh, Stormkeep was no- was number four on my list for a while. And I literally, I I listened to both of them back and forth for a while. And I was like, I got an old source. Old source is just like. Mm. Um, my other problem with Old Sorcery is I get to confuse a lot with Old Tower, which is a, was a dungeon band, so I get kind of too confused once in a while. But um, yeah, they're a good cover to me. I love cover art, guys. Like I, I love I love cover art. Um, so yeah, I like, that was a cool cover. Okay, Tucker, you going to take a guess my number three? It's it's uh, it's probably something that I haven't listened to. <laughs> I don't know, man. It might be. It, it made a lot of lists. This one's actually made a lot of lists. So I, I listened to such little new music this year, just because I was trying to just be in my comfort zone the whole time. And okay, uh, all right. Really well, dumb my, reason. Really dumb reason. My my number three record of the year, and rightfully so. I've listened to this one a lot. It is fucking dope. Surf Ungle Forever Black. Okay. Yeah. Um, I've listened to that, dude. <laughs> Dude, this um, I don't I, look. For, I'm a California dude. They're out of Ventura. The you know Ventura has a Sir Ungle Day. Yeah, so cool. People are like, I read I read an article today that talked about like going to the first their first I don't want to say reunion show, but like that that's what they everyone thought it was a reunion show, and everyone's kind of worried about it. And they come out and they don't miss a beat. Yeah, they they come out and they do it. They they never they never stopped. Um, I saw them live at Psycho a few years back, and like, dude, it was fucking sick. 
I saw the last year at Legion's Metal in Chicago. And and I Forever Black just nails like Sir Uncle Sound. I I'm sorry guys, like like I, I, I remember reading like the old like uh when like Tim Baker got named like one of the worst vocalists of all time. I love Tim Baker, man. Yeah. I, I love how scary it is to listen to. Um but this album, like my favorite song on here, Stormbringer. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm a big Elric fan. I got my my Elric, my uh, my my uh, sorry, the Stormbringer is my Mornblade. Yeah. Um, and they they just I don't know, man. This album, front to back, every track on it does it for me. Uh, Fire Divine has like that energy that like Sir Ungle could bring. Um, I was kind of worried initially that like this would be a lot of slower songs. And it wasn't. There was some pretty like fast stuff on here, and it just brings it consistently through. Um, but you see, this one, Tucker. I it all kind of turns into a blur for me because it has been a minute since I've listened to it, so I don't have enough of like an actual like background on it. But uh, like, yeah, and the vocals, man. I just I don't understand how anybody can just shit away that he's yeah. Sick. It's weird because like I, I I met Tim Baker at Psycho and I you know talked to him a little bit and I was expecting to hear like the voice of a dude who like sounds like he smokes like three packs a day and no he sounds fine he he somehow okay. pulls that vo- vo- voice off I had that I had that conversation with my students when we, when we talked about black metal we, like my students would listen to music and they think these guys are screaming and I'm like you can't scream that long dude. Like we were watching Emperor like live performances of the Emperor, and I was like, "There's no way you can scream that long. It doesn't happen. You'll you'll die." And then yeah. you hear Isan's hot, and he just has like the softest, speedy voice. And, but yeah, it's because it's it's more about how you push air through your your throat. Um, yeah. Yeah, dude, it was a. I really enjoyed this record, man. I I I listen to this one probably about like three four times a week. Um, my buddy who's not a metal dude, he bought this record. Um, it came with a, a cool box set. Um, I picked up all the, I picked up like the big elaborate set. I got the, the pin, I think it was a pin here with Elric on it. You know, I'm a, a big nut for the last stuff like that too. They got the wheeling cover. Um, but yeah, this is a band I'm, I'm happy to give to you and I, I really enjoyed this one a lot. Like just front to back, man. I, I don't want to say about it, but yeah, if you haven't listened to this one, just listen to it. Um, it, it, you can listen to it right next to any of the old albums and it sounds just as fucking good. Yeah, it There's holds no, up her. No beat miss, man. I've seen too many bands come back and you're like, oh, okay, well, that's all right. It's okay. This was like, I mean, fuck, dude. So, anyways, uh, but yeah, Sir Ungol, guys, ladies and gentlemen, that was, that was dope. Number two. Number two. Let me put in my thing here. Oh, where am I? There I am. Number two. Mortis, The Spirit of Rebellion. Not surprised. Not surprised. I listened to this album more than any other thing this year. While it did release digitally uh, pre or earlier, uh, the this came out and it's for those of know it's basically him redoing two of his old songs, two of his very 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 early songs. And it isn't just that he redid he he like he went back and re-recorded them. It's that he elaborated on them. He talked about this in interviews where he's like. Uh, he could hear or he could see there was more things between the notes that he never touched or he didn't know how to articulate and um, he comes out and he drops this um, I've seen him perform I've seen him perform it now live three times okay um, and a live mortis show you may like look at it and oh you put the link in the thing um, it seems like it's just a dude behind behind like the, the um, his machine working but it's actually very hypnotic. It, it's an experience. You're not sitting there bouncing around and like drinking and screaming at each other. Uh, yeah. I'm up there stage front forward watching him do this. Um, there's like fog. There's there's uh, trees. He, they bring in local, like they'll get like some local branches and stuff like that and make this kind of forest go on. He has a really cool slideshow that goes along with it. Um, original okay. art. Um, but Spirit of Rebellion just like... Uh, it showed us that he could still do like the the dungeon synth, and he could show you how this guy who creates this genre essentially, who also fucking wrote like all the like original Emperor shit, is fucking dope. Yeah, like this guy's up. I mean, he has nothing to prove to anybody. Morris has nothing to prove to anybody. He did it. He did it when he was a kid. Um, but he uh, he comes out with this and shows us how much more dungeon synth could give us. How much more we could actually push it. Um, and uh, 
I, I listen to this like dude I, I would listen to this whole album like front to back it's totally two songs he's only like half an hour long I told um, you he wrote he part wrote my favorite ever song ever period which one Cosmic Keys yeah 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 um, and I, I like how he the thing about El, uh, Mortis too is uh, he's a cool dude man like he's just like a he's a sweetheart of a guy I think he does I think his day job he's like he works in a hospice I think he's like a huh. like, like an attendant yeah um but yeah he he's just a sweetheart guy he has a huge his uh, a huge kiss collection that's his thing guys he collects kiss. Oh, wow. yeah there, he did a thing about talking about all the stuff for, like he like tracks down rare kiss records um and uh yeah it, it's a trip uh it's an absolute trip but yeah the, the spirit of rebellion i highly recommend this album he's got some new stuff in the works i'm, I'm part of his i i subscribe to his thing on Bandcamp. um i've heard some of the newer tracks uh, some of the previews of them, they're pretty interesting. Uh, but yeah, he's still going to go strong. I expect another big thing from him in about a year or two. So, but yeah, that's Mortis. Mortis. All right. That was number two. Hey, how's everyone holding up? How's everyone holding up back out there in uh, land? Uh, I'm going to do another giveaway real quick, too. Uh, and then so we can kind of like just kind of chat it up before I do number one. Um, let me. Uh, Oh, did I pick? I did. Okay, cool. Complete. Sorry, I feel like I'm still getting used to my. Uh, I'm gonna do another um, ten dollar gift card this time uh, to the to the shop. Uh, I owe Master Matt a uh, twenty dollar one. Um, I'm gonna do a giveaway here for the back end of the show. Um, and number one, guys, yeah, it's coming up. Uh, but let me start the next giveaway. Our second giveaway. Uh, if you guys want to join, jump in on that. Uh, it's uh, exclamation point heavy metal, and you'll. You enter to win the 10 r gift card. Uh, I should note too, if you do win multiple gift cards, you can only use one per purchase. So please be aware of that. Uh, there's uh, that is a big cartel issue, not mine. Uh, but all right, uh, my number one. So this was I, I like I said I haven't seen anyone's list. I haven't seen anyone's list, and I'm I'm still shocked and appalled that it has not appeared on anyone's list. Uh, when I heard it, I was blown away, and I and I I knew it'd be my top four. And I was pretty sure it'd be number one. Um, but here we go. Oh, Tucker, I feel bad. I feel like I'm keeping you in suspense here. I'm building up. Building up. Keeping everyone in suspense, damn it. Lucifer 3. I really like this album. No one? You know, I'm really disappointed because, oh. yeah, you are the only person I've heard talking about this record. I didn't even know this came out this year. Dude, Lucifer 3. Yeah, it came out and everyone fucking forgot about it. I don't get what happened. When did it come out? Uh, like April? Shit. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, you're, maybe you lost out. Maybe you just lost out to the pandemic. You know. Um, that's how I feel because ours dropped in March. I can see that. Let me see real quick here. Uh, March twentieth. March twentieth. Shit. So yeah, it came out at like the the, the thing of it. Um. Uh. So. Uh. So Lucifer. So it's it. it so the core of Lucifer is Joanna. Uh, now it's it's uh, Nikki Anderson as well, yeah. Um, and the so Lucifer for me play, hold, holds a special part. So one that we, we I can't talk about Lucifer without talking about the Oath. The Oath comes out with their album. It's fucking dope on Rise Above, and they disband within like two weeks or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then in less than in less than a year, I think it was about ten months, Lucifer releases, mm -hmm. and I was I was blown away by that. That like your band dissolves and then you come up with a new project. Yep. Um, and Lucifer One is really, really, really good album. I love that album. I saw them live, open for uh, High on Fire, actually, with um, Paul Bear opening. That's a bill. Yeah, uh, I believe the other band on it too was uh, Venomous Maximus. That's a fucking bill. Yeah, uh, that was in L.A. And um, Lucifer came out and played a great, great set. Uh, Joanna was super nice. That's where I first met her. And um, the uh, but the Lucifer Two comes out. Lucifer Two is very different. Uh, they didn't have Gaz on, on stuff uh, right as much, uh, but Nikki Anderson was more was involved, and it it definitely evolved the sound. I liked it a lot still. Um, and Lucifer Three really um, really pushed that sound more. Uh, my favorite track on here is actually Leather Demon. Um, it's a great ballad. Um, there's some really good emotional songs on here. Uh, I so Joanna used to live in Los Angeles. Uh, it had like a, like a synthwave band and uh, yeah. has, has kind of experience there. 
And there's some songs on here about that experience, her time there. Um, I'll say this about Joanna. Joanna's like one of the hottest grandmothers I know. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah. Um, so uh, it, it's uh, knowing some of those elements, this album comes off very personal. And even without that, it just has some good riffs. Um, I really liked on here um, uh, Midnight Phantom, Leather Demon is my favorite track on there. Uh, Coffin Fever is really, really strong. Ghost, I mean, uh, this has like these kind of classic, like there's some really cool like uh, bridges that have the, the, the claps in it. Like you, would, like you would hear like an old like 70s, 60s records. Um, there's a lot, it's a lot of fun, but it's still dark and mysterious. Uh, and yeah, I, I, if you haven't listened to it, man, go listen to it. Give it, give it a listen. Give it some, uh, give it some. I absolutely yeah, will. Yeah. Um, and also it's one of my favorite album covers too. It's a great painting um, of the band with uh, this kind of like hearse. And uh, I, I love this cover. I, I stared at it for a while. They actually had a, I don't even know, they had a recall on the cover um, because they got miscut initially the, the initial vinyl release huh. they they cut off the bottom of the, the title of the bottom of the record okay like straight up cut through the loose for three um and uh yeah you can kind of you can go on a discogs you can see it um i'll post a link to it real quick here uh yeah there, there's a link to it uh in the chat to the um you can see the image where they cut off the bottom of the freaking loose for three <laughs> Um, I didn't redeem it because I was like, I don't care. But um, yeah, I don't know. I I, I, I listened to this album and I, I really enjoyed the experience. I enjoyed the the um, the. Ex- I don't know. I, just, I really really liked it, guys. Like, it wasn't trying to be doom metal. It's not like it's it's there. There's there's a cult elements to it, but it's not heavy occult. Um, it's it's this kind of like usage of uh, the occult elements to. Um, to express the one's personal life, um, one's own personal things, and I, and I really, really enjoyed that. Um, I haven't, I don't know, I feel like I haven't talked to anybody about this album, and that's that's what scares me. And I haven't seen anyone's list. And that's I, I really think that it's just because it came out in March, and it just got buried under the pandemic stuff. Yeah, I mean, there. It was the, you know, the crazy part. They're on the same label as Body Count. It's all Century Media. That's crazy. Yeah, that's that's so bizarre. Um, hey, hey, Slayer was on Def Jam, guys. Yeah, <laughs> like like legit. They're yeah. on the hip hop label. Um, and uh, so yeah, it, it's you know it's always weird seeing how like how bands kind of move around. But yeah, I just I really enjoyed this record front to back. Um, I you know as much as I want to hear some hard pounding harsh stuff, I do enjoy hearing. Um, the melodic. I will say this about Lucifer. I know that they're um, Joanna and Nikki are married now, uh, and they have a recording studio at their place, and they are machines. I know they're working on four right now. Like I think they're getting they're pretty far into it. Um, so I really think that like that that little um, incubator they have is going to do nothing but like produce amazing music yeah. um, for the foreseeable future. So I look for, and, and, and as far as they're telling us, it's called four. It's called Lucifer four. Um, yeah, I love it. Um, I don't know, man. I, and they have some of the best album covers too. I think like the first oh, yeah, one I really definitely. liked, what's that? Definitely. Well, the first one was just that, like that mint green and just the golden blazing Lucifer. And I love that cover. The second one is, is, uh, the members of the band that red that strong red background. Yeah. And then this one has the painting. Um, and I, I, I really enjoyed that, but yeah, Joanna's voice sounds better and better. Um, you know, she's, she's a, a monster of rock guys. Like, um, if you, if you want, um, I, I talk about, I, I, I talk about her a bit here on the stream, but like, uh, Jinx Dawson from Coven, uh, I believe Joanna's the next Jinx, Jinx Dawson um, in terms of, in terms of influence, um, and I think she's gonna I think she's gonna be much more prolific in terms of her production. Um, I, I guarantee that in twenty years we're gonna be looking back on a huge discography of Lucifer. Yeah, it's just it's gonna happen. Yeah, they're they're doing it all themselves, so that too. I'm also really happy that Rise Above is reissued. Finally, fucking reissued the Oath record. Yeah, um, that record's phenomenal. Uh, the last time I saw it for sale. Like I've seen it on Discogs, it's going for like eighty dollars, something like that, just for a shit copy of it. Um, and uh, 
I love that record, but yeah, the Lucifer stuff just been grandiose. I can't say enough good stuff about Lucifer, so yeah. But yeah, a lot of people told me they didn't even know it came out. They listened to it once. They forgot about it. I mean, maybe it really is an occult record, and that it is hidden. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's yeah, uh, and everything. So yeah, this one, I just I'm I can't believe I haven't seen it on a single list. Um, I didn't even see it mentioned in like decibels like runner up list. Um, it, it just feels like so weird. I, yeah, I don't know what happened. I I, I, th- I think you're right. Maybe the pandemic just kind of pushed it out. Everybody was still not ready to cope. I really think that's what it is. There were like I think that, I feel like there were more records that came out in that time frame that just got buried. Well, yeah, that's my number one of the year, man. That's it. That's it, guys. Um, yep. Let me, uh, let me, I have a kind of a, uh, there's my recap real quick. So number one is Lucifer. Number two is uh, Lucifer three, number one. Number two is uh, Mortis, Spirit Rebellion. Number three is Sword Ungols, Forever Black. And number four is Old Sorcery, uh, Sorrow Crown. Uh, I, I like 2020 for music, man. I actually enjoyed this year. I, I listened to a lot of this stuff. Music. It really was. I was home a lot more. Um, even when I work on this on the music, but, um, I, I listen to a lot more than I was than I usually do. I listen a lot more. I listen to a lot more NPR than I usually do too, though. So that, there is that. Yeah, um, I listen to silence a lot when I drive or listen to podcasts. I listen to podcasts when I walk around. Hmm, really? Yeah. I, I I listen to like I I so so like the first day of class every semester. Um, I listen to one or two bands before I walk in the classroom, very very loud. Like and I listen to it as I walk in the classroom. I'm either listening to Immortal or I'm listening to Emperor. You got to assert dominance. What's that? You got to assert dominance. I got. I got to go with the energy. I yeah. got to let them know, man. Like you know, uh, we're, the, we're we're going to learn about immortal frost giants uh, yeah. today and the light. We are. <laughs> um, I still got another five minutes on the uh, the giveaway. I'm going to let it kind of flow out. If you guys, um, I got some viewers in here, guys. Uh, make sure you follow. Um, if you follow, you'll be able to uh, enter. So you got to be a follower. Um, but please, guys, make sure you enter. I want to. I want to give away some more Colorado and Tower stuff. Um, it's been a good year for Colorado and Tower. I got some stuff coming up next year. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I will say this: uh, starting January, I am going to be doing uh, pre-orders for the reprint of the Wolf Lord of Yule Raglan. Everybody's okay. wanted that one. That's um, my my actually my, my my highest selling shirt now is actually the one that Michael did for me. The uh, the, the two wizards. On the okay. Raglan. That one, dude, that thing sold like I sold 20% of my stock on day one. That's like, crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. Like Michael, that people would buy that one like crazy. But then um the Wolf War shirts by other by other big seller, and people have been asking for it. I'm like, all right, well, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And I my big thing is I don't like doing pre-orders because I don't know what it's gonna look like, but because yeah. I have made this shirt before, I know what it's gonna look like, so I'm okay with it. Yeah. Um and I have another big thing coming up in, in uh, March as well. But yeah, um, thank you guys for hanging out with us too. Uh, I'm gonna give another few minutes here for the the chat to um, the the Patreon. Yeah, I have a Patreon too. Uh, they actually gonna post all my links real quick. Uh, Tucker, you want to post any links, man? Just put context in there, dude. This is this is just hammer my chat full of uh, stuff here. So I do have a Patreon. Um, you can actually find all my stuff. Um, everything only play wizards. Uh, you can find here. Uh, we do have a Discord. Um, I'm available for games, uh, which has been super cool. Um, uh, we do it, uh, uh, all right, we do it every Monday night, but this is actually our last one of the year. Uh, we're going up for a break for the holidays. Uh, I think Tucker, I think I said we're going to be back on the, what, like the 4th or the 11th of January. Do you know which one I, I said? Uh, uh say the, I, I think the 11th. I think you said the 11th. Yeah, we're going to be back on the 11th. Uh, so we're going to take a few weeks off to you. Like, we've got some family stuff we want to hang out with. Take some easy Monday nights. You know, this is a good time. Like, I, I wanted to kind of break off stream a little bit. My class is over. Um, and uh, it, it's uh, I learned a lot this 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 uh, this year in terms of streaming and stuff like that, too. I've met some cool friends. I just hit Tucker up and just do this. And I've had a lot of fun doing it. Um, but, yeah, if you guys want to hit up all my stuff there, I have all my stuff on Linktree. Um I got Patreon. The Patreon, I kind of talk. I, I, I offer, you can get a discount through Color and Tower on there, but you can also like um, I do some cons- consultations on there, one on one hangouts, um, and uh, it's kind of a cool place. But I haven't I haven't done much of my Patreon for a little bit. Um, I've been focusing more on uh, my shows a little bit. But, what's that? Throne of Iron Links there. 
throat of iron, dude. Yeah, go buy some shirts, man. You got some good gear. Um, let me see real quick. Where is uh? Oh, here we go. Uh, my other big thing is I'm also um. You can also hire me to DM your games if you're looking for it. Yep. I also have a uh, drop-in games right now. Um, I played our first session last week. We're reconvening in uh, January, um, and uh, it's been a blast actually. Uh, my my uh, my pain players loved it. Like they were shocked at how cool like my my character generation was, how cool the world was. They were enjoying the kind of pacing. I know Scott here is going to be playing with us. Um, he's a super cool dude. Um, but yeah, I've been trying to show up. I play a little bit more. Um, I cut a promo for the company today. Like, nice. It was awkward. I, my, my, yeah. I'm sure. I'm pretty sure. My, you know, my wife used to be when I'm whenever I'm doing that kind of like the DM stuff. Like I'm talking to other people, but here I was doing it by myself, and you know, she's like, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> 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 um, but I got you can kind of read about my stuff on there too. Uh, but we're currently running um, the current game I'm running. I only have two more seats left too. Is uh, Bethel Lindy Kine. Um, so if you guys want to jump in on that, I got two more slots for that uh, and such. But yeah, thanks everyone for hanging out, man. Super cool. Um, yeah, uh, Ulrich, we, we usually come on here and talk about Dungeons and Dragons. We talk, and we always drop in heavy metal stuff like that because we can never stop talking about that. Um, but yeah, I had a blast tonight. I had a good good year with this all. Um, let me uh, get the let me end up the. Uh, I got about eighteen seconds left to enter. So I, I want to give everyone the amount of time. I said fifteen minutes. I want to give them their fifteen minutes. <laughs> I feel like I, I shortchanged them. Uh, I don't want there to be any reason for people to complain. No reasons. All You're right. all in your chance. Why? Yeah. So you can't. Yeah. That's why I always do. Like I, I'm not obligated to do office hours for my students during uh, finals week, but I do them just so they can't complain. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, it looks like we're good here. It's it's ended. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pick a winner. Let's see here, dude, Scott. I'm picking another winner. <laughs> all right, oh. gonna, all right, Alric, you you got a ten dollar gift card to Cauldron Tower. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll send you guys those. Uh, I'll whisper you those the the entries for that real quick here. And everything like that too but yeah thanks for hanging out with the um with tucker and me we, we really enjoyed it the chat was lively i appreciate that super cool guys um let me go ahead and uh i'll send you i'll send you guys both actually i'll send you both uh, scott and all i'll send you guys those uh those uh codes real quick here before i uh, sign off for for the night but thank you so much guys for a cool year yeah. um tucker i know uh this was a big year for throne of, throne of iron i hope you guys have a bigger year next year um hopefully hopefully, <laughs> hopefully uh, we can actually do some touring next year yeah, I know. A lot of I'm, I'm seeing tours and lineups and everything like that too. I was, I was excited to see um, the one tour that got canceled. I was excited to see was the Decibel tour this year and it didn't happen. I know that like, the, like I think there was mayhem was going to tour with Mortis, which I was like fucking. Yeah. I was like sick and I was like gonna, almost threw up over that stuff. Um, how excited I was about that. But um, yeah, guys, uh, thank you for taking a look at the list. I'll post it on my Instagram, post it on Twitter, um, and make sure you guys can get links to everything and, and everything too. This will be on the, the video on demand for a little bit, so you can you can go and review the list stuff like that. Here I have to say and check the links. But please, guys, please like support your bands, man. Like it's been hard on them. Buy some merch. This year's um, been goofy. <laughs> this year's been real fucking goofy and weird. Yeah, I you know. Uh, Look, I you know it's how I dress myself as in, as in merch. Um, it, it it's uh, yeah, you know these people they're they're people, dude. And uh, I'm hoping I'm hoping to get some support for them too here to keep them alive. So that way, when we're all ready to come back together, we can just rock out and have a badass time too. Yeah, dude, thank thank you so much, Scott. You, you, great holiday. Yeah, you guys have a good holiday season. Do what you're gonna do. Eat some cookies. Drink some coffee. Um, open some presents. I'm stoked for it. Uh, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to hanging out with my wife. We're actually, uh, I'll tell you about my holiday plans real quick. Um, yep. So the place that my wife and I got married is called the Yosemite Bug. It's up uh, up in the mountains, uh, not to be about an hour drive. And it's kind of a resort, um, but they also have a really good restaurant there called the June Bug. And they've had to close down because they can't, the people aren't staying there. The tourism's down, all that kind of stuff. The The restaurant's not open to the, in a sense, but they do do pickups. And they're doing a really cool Christmas dinner uh, pickup. And my wife and I ordered Christmas dinner from them, so we're gonna drive up there for an hour through the woods, have a nice little kind of cool, uh, fun drive for uh, Christmas Day, pick up our dinner, come home, and eat a really bad, banging uh, meal. I'm really stoked for it. 
That's um, awesome. Yeah, I'm getting. A, I got a um, venison shepherd pie. Okay. Yeah. She that sounds awesome. It. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the menu, man. Their, their menu is fucking good. They do a. Um, sure. They do a uh, a black bean lime soup that's out of control. All right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you guys have a good holiday. What about you, Tucker? You guys have plan for the holidays, man? Just chill, chill out. Uh, Christmas Eve, my mom and I are doing our normal thing that we do every Christmas Eve, which is I make a big ass uh, picture of eggnog with a bunch of rum in it, and we watch uh, Twilight Zone, like the original. Oh wow! Film, Twilight Zone. That's that's my mom and I have been doing that without the eggnog uh, since I was like fucking seven or eight. That's super and, cool. Yeah, and uh, we're gonna since we can't have a big Thanksgiving get together Christmas this year. We're just going to be driving around to, like, my aunts and uncles' places and just dropping off gifts on their porch and ding-dong ditching them. Um, yeah, my mom's kind of a maniac, actually. But <laughs> doing that, and then uh, Christmas Day, we're just going to go have a small thing with the wife's parents and hmm. her brother, and that's it. Yeah, I think it's just going to be my my, uh, my wife and I are going to – we're going to doorbell ditch my, um, uh, my sister, my nephew, my niece – yeah, um, I'm. I'm gonna miss having the fun times with some of them. We have a, I, one of my favorite stories. I'll tell my story real quick here. So this is way, way back, probably 2008, something like that. My my niece, who's uh, at the time was like I think like maybe like 13, 14. No, she's probably younger actually. No, she was she was probably younger than that actually. Um, she was probably like 12, like 11. And uh, I, I got her a gift card. And I didn't get a chance to wrap it. And I had it in my pocket, and I told my niece like, Hey, Hannah. I got your gift for you, and, and, and I reached out my pocket, and she's like, she's like, no, no, don't, don't, and I'm like, what? She's like, no, don't. I'm like, what do you think is gonna happen? She's like, you're gonna pull your hand out, and you're gonna flip me off. And this is in front of like everybody at Christmas, like we're all hanging out opening presents. She's That's like, you're gonna funny. flip me, you're gonna flip me off, and I'm like, what? I was like, just close your eyes. And she said, no, you're, you're gonna flip me off. I'm like, let me get this straight. You're gonna have your eyes closed, <laughs> and I'm gonna flip you off. Cause that's rewarding. She's like, she's like, yeah. We're all, we're all laughing. We're all laughing. So now it was a big tradition every year where I had to flip my niece off. That's at funny. Some, at some point, just because, like, to make sure she really appreciates what I'm doing for her. But it was the we were all like laughing hard. Um, we had a big thing. My mom before my mom passed was about like uh, we used to always get pizza on Christmas Eve. I mean, get like a just get shitty pizza, and um, we had a pizza one year and. I pulled a slice out. I wasn't going to eat it yet. I was going to pull a slice out to serve myself later on so when we started eating, it would be easier. And my mom got kind of mad about it. And my sister and I were like, well, what's, what's wrong? She's like, well, the pizza's going to get cold. And I'm like, what do you mean it's going to get cold? She's like, you pull that slice, it's going to disrupt how like the heat is retained in the pizza. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, and so we have this whole thing about, like, you can't take a brownie out because they're all going to get cold. Or if you took if you, if you started carving if you carved a piece of that turkey it's getting cold like shit like that so it was just always kind of a fun bit um, but that's what you guys gotta do man make your memories how you can figure it out you know uh, adapt you know it, it's yes, it's, it's all good uh, but the love the love still there guys that's the thing the love still there so keep it together all right all right I'm bouncing out I gotta bounce out on this one guys yeah, uh, let me get my thing here and we'll have uh, Throne of Iron one of my top albums of the year I didn't just do that just to do it dude I, I swear to god I, that was a legit uh, legit play I didn't do that just to appease you Tucker okay <laughs> I appreciate it I did it for Cam though but uh, no, <laughs> 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 no. Um, no it was a good it was a good year for music man I, I really enjoyed buying stuff too so but I'm, let, I'm gonna let Tucker play you guys out I'll have it up for a little bit uh, go and rock out to it have a good night everyone uh, I'm gonna eat, I'm gonna message uh, Alric and I'll message um, I'll message everybody Master Matt and everybody here real quick to the, the codes okay alright I'll see you guys I'll see you guys next year have a good one have a safe holiday stay awesome see you next year